where it is now, where it's going? Well, today, I think we're a very competitive mid-level away from where we started. Five years ago, we were an 8 and 20. And we've worked our way up the ladder, uh, stopping for a, a national tournament appearance in Division II two years ago, a corresponding schedule the year after that, and then last year broke into the Division I ranks with an 18 and 10 win lost record and uh, featured Vaughn McDade, our, our great scorer from uh, third in the country in scoring, in fact. And this year, um, you know, we have a little tougher schedule and we're, we're playing more of the middle of Division I. We're ranked there computer-wise and, and, uh, and, and we're off to a really good start. Well, you guys are riding high right now with the uh, six-game winning streak um, and are six and one at this point in the season. Is this where you expected to be? No, I'm, I think we're very fortunate to be six and one at this point in time. We've won three or four, three for sure, very close games. Games could have gone either way. And we have a road win. And uh, one other thing about our schedule is we, we dropped 10 of our 18 wins from a year ago, schools who wouldn't schedule us again. And we, we replaced those with new teams. Uh, and one of those new teams is Western Illinois, uh, first division finisher in the mid-continent. And we won at Western Illinois. That was a big surprise. We also had a really nice two-point win over Montana State, which was a terrific victory for us, and, and played a very close 94-90 uh, ball game with Moorhead. So those, those are swing games that could have gone either way, and they went our way, and that's why we're 6-1 we're and one today. How would you compare this team with the one that went 18-10 and 10 last season? Well, certainly not the dynamic guy. I always say it's much more fun to coach a guy that gets 50 against Illinois than most guys, and, uh, and, and I still say that. Uh, so, and Randy Doss was nine rebounds a game and 18 points. So different kind of team, much more balanced. Uh, we'll have three, four guys in double figures almost every game. We're actually scoring a few more points because of that. And uh, we're deeper. Um, we've had Dion Edmonds come off the bench and score 24 points. Uh, we've had Ray Perrine uh, in, in high 20s scoring, uh, who was not a starter last year. And we've had, I think, six different leading scorers in seven games. And that's, that's one of the reasons why we've, we've had the success. So we're, we're much more balanced, I think, as a team. So uh, strengths, weaknesses, uh, what would you say? Um, would you say a strength is depth? Then uh, certainly depth. I, I think another thing that uh, the scouting report on us now is, is fairly universal. Everyone knows. You know, we're not very big. Uh, we don't have great strength. We're we're very quick. We've got good athletes, and we shoot the ball well from the perimeter. We're an excellent three-point shooting team. So uh, the things we do well is, of course, run and press and shoot the threes. The things we struggle with is low post defense, uh, defensive rebounding and uh, certainly any kind of a physical contact game. We had a terrific victory over Maine here a week or so ago, who was, who was just the most physical team that, that we'd played all year. I've, we've accumulated 15 stitches so far this year among two guys. So we're, we're really a, a good, quick, little team. That, uh, and, and we have good determination, too. We try really hard. I think it's one of our biggest assets. But we struggle with the big people. Getting back to a point that you touched on before, um, you've had uh, six players uh, six different players now lead the team in scoring in the last six games. Uh, what would you attribute that to? Would that be the system or the individuals? I think it's a little more the system and uh, because we have an equal opportunity offense. We come down and the first guy that gets there shoots it. Okay. And, uh, and we have a good motion offense and, and we also have four or five people that have evolved into pretty good scorers. Uh, Craig Green was uh, under 10 points a game last year, and he's close to 20 a game this year. Ray Perrine was maybe a point or two a game, and he's up over 10 or 12 points a game. So we've added some guys that can score, and then we've had good consistent guys like Joe Schultz and Dion, who are seniors. And uh, Schultz has had a terrific start. I think he's making 58% of his threes. And so that's uh, so we've got good balance that way, and we've had some new guys step up that, uh, that I'm glad for and, and a little surprised, to say the truth. I'm going to name some individual players now, and I'd like you to just tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Just give us a little bit of a background on him. Uh, first of all, Joe Schultz from Brookfield. Well, Joe Schultz is, uh, you know, you're lucky in this, in this business if you get a coach guy like Joe Schultz. He's a four-point student. He tries. He comes to practice every day. He's, a, he's an average player that, that made himself into a good player. And uh, you don't see a lot of guys from the suburbs that do this. I mean, you know, Schultz is, most of Schultz's friends are at the swimming pool and, and playing tennis. Uh, Schultz is, and he's now a city guy. Rob Kuklin played for me two years ago, was like that, uh, from Beloit. And uh, Schultz is a, is a city player, plays our game, great shooter, learned to be a pretty good ball handler, um, learned to play up and down, though he's not as comfortable in that as he would be in a, in a slower environment, um, but really developed. You know, you can tell he's, he's a smart kid because he got better when he was here. Dion Edmonds. Uh, hardest working guy on my team. Uh, one of my recruits in the Chicago Catholic League where I used to coach. 
Um, terrific inside player. We've asked him to play point guard, center. Uh, we've asked him to shoot the, from the shooting guard this year and has done most everything and, and uh, also by far our best defensive player. We use him uh, as a stopper in these games. Real interesting story, uh, Olafu Abaji. Yeah. Uh, a Nigerian via Vincennes Junior College in the middle of southern Indiana, um, and, and a guy who hadn't played very much basketball. In fact, wasn't a starter at the start of the year, but uh, has come on and come on and made two huge baskets and some free throws at the end of the Montana State game. Really, really made plays that won the game for us, and has given us more balance. You've got to guard our center now, and now your, your big guy can't stand in the lane and bother our little people. So he's really developed, and he's... Uh, you know, he's, he's a terrific guy to talk to. He's, he thinks about other things other than basketball, and, and he's, uh, you know, he's been in this country four years now and has really developed into, into a good player and, and uh, a terrific guy to coach. Craig Green. Uh, probably the most gifted player we have. Uh, just incredible jumper, you know, uh, made the play that's been written about and, 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 and covered both on television and newspapers where he shot a three-point shot, missed it, dunked the rebound. That's a big-time play. Guys in the pros can make that play. Um, he's gotten better. Because when he first came, he was—he uh, didn't play much high school basketball as a senior. Was a track star. Uh, his freshman year here, he, he shot the ball a little bit, but basically played inside. Last year, he got a chance to shoot some threes. Didn't handle the ball much. Now he has the threes, the handle, and of course his great jumping ability. So he's really gotten better. He could be our most improved guy over the last three years. And just a few words on uh, Mark Mitchell. Well, it's hard to have a few words on Mark Mitchell, but <laughs> he's uh, he's a terrific player, and uh, I think you know maybe a guy that's. Uh, that's the point guard that makes the difference in the close games. Uh, you know, he's got some good skills. What I've tried to do with Mitchell is to stretch him out. I've really, we've made him shoot the ball more. He's not that comfortable doing that, but he's, geez, up to 17, 18 points a game now. And uh, a great handler and a very exciting guy to watch. Really, you know, a local player. I think he gets a lot of uh, local interest, but I think he enables us to play those games well down the stretch. Steve, we're going to have to temporarily interrupt you here this uh, conversation. Um, we'll be back after this brief timeout. I'm from a town where things are as good as they come And it's pictured in my mind Just as clear as the midday sun What a way to start your day. How many of you sit in traffic every day, polluting the air, wasting time and energy, pushing your stress level into the red zone? And unless you and I do something about it, it's going to get a lot worse. However, there is a solution. It's called mass transit. Wherever we live, we're being threatened by the problems of dirty air and gridlock. Whether you're living in New York, Akron, Los Angeles, or Champaign-Urbana, to solve the transportation problem, you have to think transit, you have to get involved. Cleaner air in cities and suburbs, less traffic congestion, energy conservation, growth of business and jobs, safer travel. It's not hard to become active in a campaign to improve the American lifestyle and economy. I'm doing it right now, along with these other people. Join us, because America's future rides on transit. Welcome back to, to UW on Brown Ball Wrap-Up. You're 6-1 and one at this point in the season, Steve. What are your goals for the remainder of the year? Well, I think that uh, one of the things we thought about at the start of the year was could we play well here in Milwaukee? Difficult home schedule, and we've done that so far. Now we go on a five-game road trip, which, which will be very tough. But I, I think what, the one thing we concentrate on the players is that if you're an independent, it doesn't matter about a league tournament because you don't have one. It doesn't matter about a, a stretch run in the league. You have to simply win as many games as you can. Every game counts the same because they simply add up your total, and that's how your year was. So I think we can still play very well at home. The road will be difficult for us. We've still got to go to Utah. We've got to go to Eastern Michigan. We've got to go to Maine. We've got to go to Montana State. We've got a lot of tough. We've got to go to Drake. 
Um, but as long as we can continue to play well here in Milwaukee, both downtown in the Mecca and in the Clancy Center, then I think we'll be, have a respectable year because we've got 15 home games, and we're fortunate to have that. And uh, so I think the emphasis is on play as tough as you can at home, take your chances out there on the road. The, uh, the future looks bright now with uh, Green and Mitchell returning for another season. Um, could you tell us about next year's schedule? You have uh, UWGB in a home-and-home -home series now. Yeah, we do. I, I think uh, we've been very fortunate here in Milwaukee for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, we have the ability to play home games in the Mecca, and I can't get a team like Green Bay or Montana State or really any mid-level major team, Green Bay being a, a top-level major team, to come and play us unless we play downtown. So I've got nine games scheduled out to Mecca next year, so we've, we've increased that. And I would envision that going to 10 or 11, uh, and, and then that way we, we could attract solid teams here. Um, Green Bay was nice enough to play us both in the Mecca and up at the Brown County. And uh, you'll have a lot of the same teams from this year, and, and we're certainly going to make another trip to Utah. So, but again, I think I've got 14 home games out of 27 next year. They cut us one game, so we're one game less. And as long as you can maintain home games in a majority or close to that as an independent, then you're always going to be competitive. Um, that's the trick in college basketball. And we're fortunate to have the Mecca, and we're fortunate to have high school basketball in Milwaukee exploding. <coughs> and people want to bring their teams in here to be showcased to the Milwaukee area players. And we've also got a lot of Milwaukee area players on these teams that we're playing. Speaking of Green Bay, um, a lot's been said and written about a, the possibility of a Division I uh, basketball tournament between, uh, I should say, Wisconsin's Division I basketball teams. There are four of them. Uh, what would that mean to our program here? Well, I, I think it would be terrific. You know, we've, uh, we've, we've certainly advocated it all along. And the thing that I've said and, and I really believe is that it's our job to be competitive. Because if we're not a competitive team, then we don't have the discussion, well, what would happen if they played Madison? What would happen if they played Marquette or Green Bay? And uh, we're the new guy in the block. We're, we're the one that just started. In fact, just our second year in this. And uh, so I'm really, I'm really proud of the players because they've played well enough so lots of people are talking about this, and people aren't really sure how it would go. And as long as we can keep ourselves that strong, then I think eventually you're going to see this tournament, the first step being let's us play Green Bay, see how that goes, and then and so on and so forth. So um, we have to keep strong, and, and then uh, we have to be a viable uh, competitor for these other three teams. Uh, what about the likelihood now of um, a conference affiliation? We heard a little bit about that over the, uh, over the previous summer now. Well, the conference affiliation thing is, is really a, a difficult thing. And I, if I have a little time to go into this with you, know, they, they started with an eight-year waiting period mm -hmm. simply to make sure that the, that the big schools got to keep the money longer. Uh, it, it, it was a very strong power thing by them. Our athletic director, Bud Haiti, did a terrific job in negotiating and lobbying and reducing our waiting time using some of our previous time so that after the end of the season, we have only two years left, and then we can qualify for an automatic bid. That keys the league. Leagues are not excited about you if you can't get the automatic bid because that's what they are awarded. And, and so it's difficult to be in a league. So I think we've got two years to build our program up to the point where we have the vast majority of our home games in the Mecca and a competitive team. And then I think we'll be a, you know, a, a good alternative for any league. If the Mid-Continent, we'd be a terrific league, the Missouri Valley, uh, the Midwest Cities. There's lots of things going to happen in the next couple of years. Our job is to make sure we have a good place to play, a representative team, <coughs> and uh, uh, quality guys so that we have a good reputation with our program so people would want us in their league. Just out of curiosity, have you formulated a long-term plan now? Um, well, I, I think, uh, in fact, I was asked this question the other day, and one of the things that, that you, what you have to remember is that we've come so far so fast. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've come from, from uh, a new team, and last week we were 120 on the computer rankings. Now, that puts us against ahead of Villanova, the Big East, uh, Arizona State, uh, it's incredible, the teams that were the So we're in the mid-level of Division I already. Uh, my goal is to just stay in there. I, you know, we're going to have a lot of tough games here. And, and, and if we can maintain that middle third ranking um, for, for two or three years and, uh, and, again, develop a good, strong home record. You mm -hmm. know, I always appreciate Marquette 181 in a row, and, mm -hmm. and I'd like to win 81 in a row downtown the Mecca. You know, if we can do that, then that's what people want. They, they, they want a, a team that has a good, strong home following, and uh, so, so that's our goal, and to, to compete with some, some pretty heavy hitters that we're playing right now. So uh, the computer rankings are some consideration then for coaches, uh, particularly the fledgling programs. Then. Absolutely, because, yeah. it, it, because it, it, the, the key element to those is that it, it, it makes you okay to lose to. Mm -hmm. Because if you're, if, you're, uh, you know, if you're a bottom 20% team, people won't play you in case you might beat them. But it's okay to lose to us now. We have beat some pretty good teams, and we almost beat some exceptional teams a year ago. So, um, and, and that's, that enables us to schedule. The lifeblood of an independent is your schedule. 
because you're not locked in by a league, and that's why independents, there's few of us these days. Um, but you know, I, I think that the fact that we're a, a solid team and have a good computer ranking and a good reputation, then we can get teams from the big sky, like Montana State plays home and home, Mid-Continent team home and home, uh, Ohio Valley home and home. Um, that will enable us to, to keep going through this process. And, and uh, so that's, that's why the computer rankings, and they come out every week so everybody sort of sees how you're doing. There's a bunch of uh, somewhat, uh, somewhat, uh, some criticism circulating, uh, you know, uh, criticizing Marquette and Wisconsin schedules for scheduling a bunch of uh, teams that rank a little bit lower, actually quite low on the uh, on the computer polls. Uh, the same really can't be said about the teams that you've played. No, we've played solid teams because uh, we couldn't get those teams to play us because the, um, the, lower, the lower level teams all want you to play home and home, and we'd be mm -hmm. glad to. That's our rule. If you'll play us in Milwaukee, we'll go to. You know, we'll go anywhere, we, and we go all over the place to, to find games. Um, but it's difficult for us to schedule those games, so people don't schedule us unless they think they can beat us. And so therefore, we have mid and upper level teams because they feel like they can beat us. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, that's, and that's okay with us because it, it, it's much more challenging, but I, I think some of the times those games, in fact, uh, Dick Bennett last night had a, had a blowout and, and was anxious for his tougher games. Um, I, I think that it toughens up your team, and a team like ours, it's got to go play five road games. I think that's some of the tough home games might help that way. So I think a strong schedule is important. I think you also got to remember we're in a pro market here in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. and we're the new guy on the block. And we cannot afford to have some people that aren't exciting people to watch. We've got to bring in good teams, even if we lose to them. Um, that's where we brought Utah in here last year in Eastern Michigan, because I think people want to see us play in uh, some solid teams. What's, what's the likelihood of the UWM Panthers playing at the Bradley Center anytime in the near future? Well, I, you know, the, to be honest, that's a difficult thing. Um, the Bradley Center is, uh, <coughs> has so many tenants, and uh, many of the pro schedules are not uh, given out until August before that year starts. And my schedule's already made for next year. Our schedules are made so far in advance, it's difficult to get dates. I prefer the Mecca myself because of the great floor, the fact that uh, our, our attendance is increasing, and uh, our people, the people that come to our games, we had a couple thousand in the Mecca, it sounds like 15. Mm -hmm. A couple thousand at Bradley Center sounds like two. Um, and uh, we can't get the kind of dates we want, you know. And I, and I do think, and I think you, if you talk to the Marquette people, they'll tell you that the Bradley Center is a gorgeous place, but we need a little advantage at home. And uh, we get a little advantage in the Mecca. Um, the fancy arenas, uh, sometimes th that isn't quite an advantage. So I don't see us being a tenant down there, certainly in the near future. I, I, I see us in the Mecca um, or, or whatever it takes the place of the Mecca someday. But I, I can see us in a, in a smaller, more intimate environment. And I think we can have a lot of success there as uh, Al McGuire did. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Uh, it's just about time for another uh, timeout. We'll be back in just a moment with more UWM Round Ball wrap up. How do you treat a person with a disability? Like a person. But what does that mean? Listen to what I have to say. Don't look at the differences. Look at how many ways we're the same. Accept me for who I am, just as I accept you. Speak directly to them, not the person they are with. You know, being disabled doesn't mean that you can't speak for yourself. Consider my presence in the supermarket the theater, the workplace, the airliner, or anywhere else. It's perfectly natural. I extend to them the same courtesy that you would to anyone else. Give me a chance to work for you. Don't talk loudly or slowly. Being physically handicapped doesn't mean that they're hearing impaired necessarily. Get to know who I am. You might like me. Sounds good to me. Remember, you're not treating me like a person when you park in my space. Milwaukee Area Developmental Disability Service Agencies. People reminding other people that everyone wants to be treated like a person. Here in the Milwaukee area, there's more of what you're looking for. Just open the door. With Viacom and get better acquainted with the world around you and the universe too. Anytime, day or night. We open the door. To sports of every imaginable sort. To the classics that never grow old, or channels for kids that challenge the imagination. With cable in the classroom, we can show as well as tell. Viacom Cable, where the movies are newer, the issues are clearer, and so is the picture. We share the past and a future of more and better programs and service. Viacom Cable. Your time's well spent. Welcome 
Welcome back to UWM Round Ball Wrap Up with head coach Steve Antrim. Steve, um, we, we, talk, we were talking earlier about the uh, uh, potential conference affiliation, but the fact remains that for the moment you are an independent. Tell us a little bit about the life of an independent now. Well, it's a, it's a difficult situation in terms of the frequency in which you play. Mm -hmm. We opened up and played five games in ten days. Then we took ten days off for finals. Now we play a game, and then we go play four more in eight days. You have games in spurts, and so your players have to have to react to that. So we'll, you know, we won't practice for long periods of time. Now they all like that. That's the thing they like the most about it. <laughs> and then we'll have long periods of practice, and it, it's always going to be that way for us. And the other thing I like about the independent thing is that we take some great trips. You know, while, while you folks are here and shoveling out that snow, we'll uh -huh. be playing Sacramento State and Cal State Northridge and, and, and things like that. And also, I have the flexibility to schedule many of my home games when we're in school and the students are on campus and take a long road trip during vacation. Now, that's a good thing for our students because they don't have to miss finals. They don't have to miss exams. Um, you know, so we have, we have a schedule that's based pretty much around our academic year. And that's, that's kind of a good thing. Um, the other difficult thing about independence, of course, is, is the, the fact that our officials are signed out of a league, the Mid-Continent, and we go play other people, and we get officials from their leagues, and mm -hmm. so we don't really have any allegiance to us. And, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of at the mercy of lots of different people. So, uh, you know, I tell players when I recruit them, you, we've got to have strong guys. You, you, you go to lots of strange places where you're not going to come back again. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've got to have really strong-willed players to play the independent schedule because you play in different parts, parts of the country, different levels of context, different gyms. And all of that, uh, you know, can be confusing unless, uh, unless you've really you know, got strong individuals. I, I think we have some guys like that. Independents certainly are a dying breed. Um, would you prefer a conference affiliation, uh, what, what would being under that heading mean? Well, I think Rick Majerus used to say mm -hmm. great things. Once, once you want whatever conference you're in, that's the top level of player you'll be able to recruit. Mm -hmm. Now, and so therefore, I think that, uh, that everybody in our department would prefer us to be in a conference as soon as possible. I would prefer us to have the strongest team possible and then therefore be, you know, be a real strong candidate in a conference because everybody cuts a different deal when you go in a conference. And I want to make sure that we have a good team so that we cut a good, strong deal for ourselves, for our own program, for our students, and for our, for our city, and things like that. So I think that's the most important thing. This is a very tough business now, this mm -hmm. college basketball, because of all the money involved. And uh, I want to make sure that we, get, that we get a really good shot at it, because that ultimately will determine how successful you'll be. Talk a little bit, if you would, about uh, recruiting for a fledgling program. Uh, it's, it's, it's a different art form at our level. <laughs> we, get, uh, we spend 35 cents to recruit Greg Green. <laughs> you know, we get Von McDade for a phone call across town at the YMCA. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a different kind of thing we do. And, and what you have to have, you have to have two great guys. I've got Greg Capper and Ron Hunter who really know the game and who are big in the Milwaukee basketball family, which is a real family and it's not that big. And people know, you know so they know if a guy's getting a fair shake at our school. The second thing is that we have to recruit the kind of players that play like we play. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily need big guys. We just need really quick guys and very athletic guys. And also guys who can really shoot. You know, shooting is a high priority in, in our recruiting. And, uh, and the third thing that we do is we have to be able to project a guy who isn't there now but might get there. And uh, we have to project him that way. Green, track star. We don't know, but we take him because we think he's so quick and we run and press and things like that. Um, Vaughn, small forward in junior college, boom, guard, 30 points a game. Um, things like that, you know, and the other thing we have to do is we have to develop them when they get here. Marty Moore, our trainer, does a great job of that with the weightlifting and the training mm -hmm. and the eating and, and all, all of this kind of things that they do. And uh, our guys get better when they're here. So we may not get a top 50 guy coming in, but two or three years later, that guy can compete with the top 50 guys. And that's, that's allowed us to be competitive right away because we're able to find those kind of guys. Uh, what are the chances uh, in the immediate future of getting anyone like Yvonne McDade again? Is that well, that's, that's a hard thing, uh, though, I, though I do think that, uh, you know, the fact that we got him out of Milwaukee means that we've got two freshmen this year, and I'm not sure how good they're going to be. They're, they're not going to play, um, but they're, they're talented, talented. Mark Briggs from Marshall High School and Gene Sims from Don and Racine, these are talented guys. Uh, Sims is going to be every bit as good a player as Green is. And uh, so what we need to do is just get these guys in there, and, and someone will explode like that, you know. The good thing, we're, we're very fortunate, we're right here in Milwaukee, and Milwaukee basketball, as I mentioned earlier in the show, is, is out of sight. Rick Cobb with the AAU, the high school coaches, we've got, you know, we've got year-round basketball now. You've got to have year, they do it in Illinois, and Kentucky, and Indiana, that's where they really do it. And we're getting that here, and our guys are, are just as good. So if we can get a couple of those guys every year, then we're going to be competitive, uh, you know, with, 
the, the budget restrictions that we have and, and still be able to go out and play those mid-level teams. So, you know, our recruiting is, is, is a different kind of a thing, and, and I think if we stay on it and keep getting the Milwaukee guys, that we might pop up with another McDade sometime. Getting back to some of the individuals on the team, uh, I find uh, Mark Mitchell uh, a, a really interesting story. Uh, his story was uh, aired on a local station about a month or so back uh, prior to the season. Could you tell us a little bit about, uh, about that? Well, sure. His story is a lot like McDade's. You know, mm -hmm. they're both playground legends in Milwaukee. They went off to faraway places, uh, didn't like it, got better, came back. Um, they, they both really love to play. Uh, they're much different kinds of players. One's a, <coughs> one's a, one's a small forward that we stretched into a pretty talented guard, and one's a little point guard that we're in the process of stretching into a, a, a well-rounded guard. Um, you can stretch guys like that if they love to play. They both love to play. They're both also well known to every 12-year-old in Milwaukee. You'd be amazed. I, I played in a benefit basketball game the other day for the police academy, and, and how many little kids knew Mark Mitchell. Mark Mitchell's a guy in town. Um, that helps us. Those little kids come to the games. They also want to get better and be like Mark Mitchell. And uh, so he's, he, he's done a terrific job that way. He's overcome a learning disability to be a competitive college student. And uh, he's, he's a very exciting guy. You know? and, and he loves, he loves to play. That's, that's the main thing. I can, I can do a lot with guys who love to play. Um, Steve, uh, this program is really kind of conducive to getting people with interesting stories in here. Um, junior college transfers, um, people like uh, Greg Eben, um, if you could tell us a little bit about him now. Well, Greg Evan is, is, is a guy that's, that, that came from Mark Mitchell's school, and, and w w though Mark Mitchell's story was a great story, Greg's is, is kind of the other way, kind of with yeah. a negative story. You know, he came in, he, he wanted to really play, had a foot injury, played, did as much as he could, had to give up the game a week ago just because there's just too much pressure on, on the feet and, and too much of an injury. So yeah. that's why I really respect the guys that play because they're the best of the best, and lots of people try and play. Some of <laughs> them are very good physical things happen to them like that. You know, that's why a guy like Mitchell Green, Perrine, those guys, you know, they're very talented guys and they've come through without injury, which is a, a fortunate thing on their part. In closing now, is there anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't touched on or that I haven't asked? Well, I, I think one of the things that, that we're really excited about is, is the fact that, uh, that, that we've got a local team full of guys that are, that are very competitive guys and, and play an exciting brand of basketball. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what college students are about. You know, they're a little unpredictable and, 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 and you're not really sure how it's going to go. So, uh, you know, I think, I think as far as I'm concerned, I really like our team. And I think you'd like our team too. And anybody that, that talks to our players, I'm proud of our guys. I think they're quality people and they're really fun to coach. So this, is, uh, this has been a terrific year that way. Thank you so much for joining us today, Steve. We really appreciated having you here. Um, I want to wish you success in the upcoming year. Um, and thank you for joining us at Panther Round Ball Wrap Up. Uh, for Coach Steve Antrim, I'm Paul Spacuza, wishing everyone a good day. Podium down behind me, trying to let people know how far away the team is, and they were just.